in a time when travel was banned. Adventure, pretty much non-existent. Four obsessed anglers put their heads together to fill that empty void in their soul. They call fishing. Not being welcome on land, the crew decided the only way to do it was by floating off the coast of Belize in their trusty vessel, Floho. The plan? Sail for 21 days from the northern tip of the country all the way to the south and hopefully get some fish to eat a fly along the way. The captain in charge of this motley crew? That's Deadshot Danny. Known around these parts for his deep skill set as a sailor, spear fisherman, and all around waterman. I guess you could say they're in good hands, at least for now. I've been sailing ever since I was young, man. When I was very small, we used to live right in San Pedro there, like across the street, and we'd be in the ocean, six o'clock in the morning. We'd make like little boats out of styrofoam and stuff and tie a string on them and pull them along the beach. And we used to do that every day. I truly got a passion for sailing. That's where I get to free my mind and be thoughtless for a while. Especially if it's a nice, calm day. Belize offers something that nowhere else really does in a sense where you can sail around an entire country and just fish different setups and different flats and different fish. It's my home base now and the fishing is incredible. You can go to every little atoll, every little sandbar, every little rim flat and you're gonna see fish. No matter the weather, whether it's blowing or raining, there's always something you can fish for here. Everything from reefs coming into flats to turtle grass to channels on the inside. It's one of the epicenters for permit. They all congregate in these areas. These atolls are perfect for them. They have tons of food for them, shrimp, crabs, everywhere you walk. The thing about Belize is I think that there's so many people that fish here, and they're all hitting the same areas in the same water, where there's endless, endless, endless habitat to be fishing. And a lot of it doesn't get fished. The idea for us was to have this boat and have kind of unlimited access to all the zones that we wanted to get to. We weren't dependent on a lodge or a guide. Basically, we could go out there, do our own digging, and do what we found. It's unique because not a lot of people do it. There's not a lot of people out at Turnip Atoll or Glover's Atoll who are walking six, seven, eight, ten miles a day. There's not a lot of literature, there's not a lot of video about it. Like, it is kind of this exciting new place that uh, you don't know a lot about. To make this work, the first thing we needed to do was find a captain. We're all kind of apprehensive talking about the captain and not knowing what his program was going to be. And just from the get-go, Dan shows up and he's the man. Yeah, you ready to do this oh, or what? Let's go, man. Let's get, go now. It's going to get a little weird. Let's go, let's go. Ready. Let's, ride. Out of here. let's ride. Let's ride. Let's ride. We're out of here, dude. San Pedro, peace. We are on our way to turn up at all. Four hours and some rough seas. Find a nice spot to spend the night and go hammer tomorrow. The program every day on the boat would basically be, you know, wake up, kind of game plan with our captain Dan, gear up, offload canoes and boat paddleboards, 
get everyone going out on the flats and checking all these zones that we wanted to check. We're winging it, looking on maps every night and just kind of going with gut feelings and looking at water flows and tides and things like that. And hopefully when we show up to the spots that we think are good, there's fish there. very much kind of a do-it-yourself operation. Some days we would be hunting permit, and some days we'd be hunting parrotfish, and some days we'd be hunting big barracudas. To have the flexibility that the boat provided in that sense was invaluable. I haven't had too much experience on flats fly fishing trips. You know, there's something to be said about putting yourself out there and learning from people who are better than you. Way out there, step into their line, step into their line. Most of my experiences were in freshwater. I got into saltwater fly fishing and fell in love with it immediately. I really, really enjoy the team aspect and the fish are bigger. Goals for this trip are just to learn from those around me and see what new species I can put on the board for myself. The in-betweens make these trips for me. Especially if you're living on a sailboat. We were depending on fish for protein. We went spear fishing, we were trolling two rods, we had two hand lines out the back. We were eating all the good eating fish that we could. Every night, we'd get back from flats fishing and we'd set up the spin rods, set up the fly rods, and see what we could get going off the back of the boat. And it was inevitably this super fun little fishing party that we would have off the back of the boat. <laughs> This is the most fly fishing I've done. These guys really got me into it now. Danny's the man. Everyone has been teaching Danny slowly, and he's been learning more and more every day. When you have somebody like Danny who understands fish their whole life, it's very quick for them to pick up a sport like fly fishing. Yeah. Maybe first cast you ever made to bonefish. Strip, strip, boom. And he just comes tight on this bonefish and just goes berserk. Let's go! Come on, what you say? And we got them. Wicked awesome. They, did, they didn't look like they were in for the crab today. Yeah, the stinky brownie looking in the big brown eye. <laughs> Caught him. <laughs> One of my concerns as a guide and like a fisherman is like, how do you plan on going out here and catching permit with like 18 feet walking over crushed coral? Like, that ain't gonna go. We spooked some fish and caught some fish and it's been a process and we're learning. We're getting a lot better at, at doing this. And the more cognizant people are of kind of the team aspect of it and how we're all helping each other out and dropping back and moving up and staying silent when we need people to do it. And we've gotten to the point where we can do it now. 
when the permit showed up, nobody cared about any other fish. It was literally the only thing that mattered. They're just a very difficult fish to catch. You can do everything right 10 times and maybe get one hookup. Their ribs are actually hollow, so they feel vibrations more. They're very, very sensitive fish, and for that reason, you gotta be on your game. When they hit the flats, you gotta make sure everything's right. Come on, Rude! Come on! Doing a do-it-yourself trip like this, and we're finally able to grab one of those permit's tails, it's a moment that can't be beat, not in fishing. Oh, that was so good. I really hope this is a perk. I've never caught a barracuda before. It was really cool to target a new species like this and especially a fish like that. I've always been a girl to hang with the boys. It's been interesting living on a sailboat with them in such a confined space. So at this point, I'm not even sure if I'm a girl anymore. Anglers and friends, I think we all definitely grew in this three weeks, learned a lot about ourselves and you know what it takes to pull off a trip like this. It takes a lot of communication, it takes a lot of miscommunication, it takes trial and error, and it takes being okay with, we're gonna figure it out as we go along. Well, it looked like our crew found their adventure and a new friend in dead shot Danny. Like all great odysseys, the unknown surprises and obstacles create the adventure. So go grab your friends and venture into the unknown. You won't regret it. Yes.